in the package, okay? It's like God knows, it's kind of like this. God knows who's going to, you know, run the ball, and he knows who's going to fumble it. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> he may give that person an opportunity so they can see, like, oh, you see you fumbled that? Okay. <laughs> you can get that right this time, okay? But then there's some people that, by consistency, he says, okay, all right, we're going a little, a, a little bit of yardage, but now we can go a little further, right? Now we can run some plays together. So that's the thing I learned about the Lord is whatever you've been called to be in the body of Christ, God always gives like little pieces of things for you to do so that it just basically helps out in the bigger picture, okay? Uh, tonight, I wanted to make sure that we are on track with how the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me in regards to, you know, the end times. Really just, I don't even like to necessarily call it end times, but the end of like this age, okay? Like the end of how the world is going to go, not the end of the world, because the world's not going to end. God is recreating everything, you know? But this is the state where we're in right now, Okay? Even people are arguing right now, left and right. You know, are you going to vote blue? you going to vote red? you going to vote purple? Nah. It's like, okay. But it's like our perspective has to go with Christ. Like thousands of years have transpired now, at least 2,000, and you've had different ages of the church and this persistency where people were persecuted or, you know, dealt with different governments, but they still remained, all right? There's still always a remnant. There's still always a people that won't give up Christ, amen? They won't drop Jesus, okay? But then you now have a very deceptive, like, uh, a deceptive um, mindset, that has captured the people. And when I say the people, like, the way, let's say, Christianity has been presented, if you start looking through this word, people will really get thrown off. Because then they'll be like, man, like, I don't remember the pastor saying that. <laughs> or I don't remember the minister. I don't remember my, my friend or whoever, right? Like, how things are portrayed and then when you look at the Word of God and you see, wow, this is like actually going to really happen. This is what God's intention is. So right now we're on, a, we're on a plan. There's a plan of action that's happening. The plan of action is that God is saying, I'm getting rid of evil and sin from the world, from the universe. But what he's going to do is he's actually going to quarantine it. Okay? You guys ever heard that term, quarantine? When somebody gets sick, right? Oh. Oh, yeah, COVID, yeah. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> They're trying to put everything, quarantine, quarantine this, quarantine that. It's like God is saying Jesus is dealing with every enemy, every rebel against God, whether it be in this physical realm, in the hum whether it be human beings, you know, uh, whether it be satanic forces, evil forces, you know, a weird-looking donkey, whatever. It's like, whatever it is, Jesus is like, if you're against me, you, you're going to be under my feet. Because that's what the Bible says. He's going to put every single enemy under his feet and then hand the kingdom over. He's going to rule for that thousand and then hand the kingdom over back to the Father. Okay? And so, but Christ and God all completing this magnificent will for the world, for heaven. And so we kind of want to look at something because there is a very strong delusion. And a delusion is like a major deception that's happening. Like it's almost like, a, like if somebody is like programmed, not just brainwashed, like they're just under like a spell, like under like, a, they're, they're so out of it, they can't even tell like right and wrong, you know? It's a very dangerous place to be. 
Very dangerous place to be. And I know we were talking about that the other week. You know, we are <laughs> trying to talk, <laughs> trying to get a word in when we were near the San Marcos campus. And we started dealing with a little feisty uh, college student, okay? <laughs> you know, I mean, there's always a lot right there when you have like a on, right plastered right on what? What was it, the little signal light? It said in capitalism, social, sh- socialist movement or something. I'm like, and I'm not even like political like that, but it's like I understand the kingdom. And so when I see a trajectory of our world going a certain way, I'm like, okay, it's like we need to keep our eyes major open, right? We need to keep our spirit, our, our, our spirit man open to what's happening. So the world is moving a certain way. You can see the Bible says that sin is rampant. It's ramping up, right? It's not like what we talk about, like, well, there are sins back in the day. You know, like I was telling the guy <laughs> about Sodom and Gomorrah. And he was like, yeah, that's when the angels, you know, did this and, and with, the, with, the, with the daughters. And I was like, ah, wrong. Like, that's almost like 13 chapters before. <laughs> you know, he was confusing Genesis 6 with Genesis 19. And he just refused to want to just let go of it. And I was just like, and I kind of felt like he was under a delusion, like a spell. I was like, can you wake up and just take two seconds to look at the text with me? He was like, for what? I've read it all. I was just like, you're not listening to me. Like, I've read this before too, and I'm still learning things. You see what I mean? I don't even know how long it would take for us to really grasp the word of God like that. You know what I mean? It's like, and, and, and then the Lord let me know, it's like, hey, there is a truly a spiritual conflict. There's a spiritual thing happening at work. All right. Um, and one of the things I want to show you guys, just because the spirit of the Lord told me to share just for a moment. And this is not up there, but it has to do with that spiritual influence. In 2 Corinthians, if any of you guys want to turn to it, it's just 2 Corinthians. I believe it's um I believe it's chapter Let me see here. Uh, chapter 4. It's chapter 4 and it's verse 3. It says or actually it's um it's one. Let's go one. This is Paul basically speaking to the people. And he says, therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. So right there, he's basically saying the old way, the old covenant is a wrap. The new way to salvation, the new way to being right with God is through his son, Christ. Amen. He's saying it's through him. Ain't no other way. We need to proclaim this. He said, we reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. So Paul was defending his apostolic authority and the authority that came from Christ alone. By the Spirit, he's saying, we don't try to trick anyone or distort the Word of God. And there are many people out there, you guys, trying to change this thing up to benefit their own agenda, to benefit an agenda that does not serve Jesus. An agenda that serves maybe political parties or maybe even the, the, the true agenda, which is serving the world, serving the spirit that is of the world. He says, we tell the truth before God and all who are honest know this. And one of the things I want to share with you guys, as a preacher of the Lord, when we're talking to people, especially like evangelism, I tell you guys before, I don't care about winning a stupid argument. Arguments are stupid to me. (laughs) You understand? That's pride. That's arrogance. We're trying to win a soul, but we're also trying to stand on the truth. So we can't go like, well, I got to win the soul and I'm going to lie. No, God's going to make sure that you don't have to lie or compromise this, right? The word is the word. They either accept it or they don't. Amen? Amen. It's like, it's like uh, when we was little kids and oh, help me Jesus, I have flashbacks. <laughs> My mom making like a tuna helper or something. And she put like peas in it. And I'd be like, no, don't put the peas in there. She's like, y'all got to have some vegetables. And I'm like, no, <laughs> don't give me those peas. Right. But it's like, how is the vegetables going to come? Like, it ain't going to come through no, what, ketchup? 
Help me, Jesus. <laughs> like, it's a fruit. It's a fruit. No. You know, I mean, like, the reality is, like, this is the, this is the dish that the Lord served. Amen? And we can't just push stuff to the side. And that's what the world wants to do. They would be like, I, I like that part. Yeah, love, joy, peace. But they would be like, correction, judgment, what? Conviction? Uh, God, you, you do that too? Yes, he does. We learned in Romans 12, or I believe Romans 11, it says God is both what? Kind and what? Severe. Did you guys know that? He's kind to those that appreciate his kindness, to those that come to him. Now, remember the Bible says he gives grace to the who? Humble, amen? And then he what? Resists the who? Proud. So God is not like, you know, when people, and that's why I was having that conversation, that dialogue with that guy, I was like, when did you become God, bro? And he had the nerve to say that he had more morals, he had better morals than God. I said, oh, look. me and Angel looked at each other like, Lord, please don't smite him. <laughs> because it was, he was literally, that's the problem with humanity. Uh, something demonic goes inside of us and feels like we can now judge God. We say, you come down here and we correct you and see how that feels to you. And God is like, wait a second. And I told him, I said, what are you? He said, a mere human. I said, exactly. I said, you can't bring nothing into this world. You can't take nothing out. I said, what type of distortion, what type of spiritual confusion has entered your mind? And, and here's the problem is the Christianity that does not confront or the man of God that doesn't confront, right? That looks like the safe one. Amen? Like, that's the nice pastor. That's the nice Christian. That's the type of Christianity I want. Remember, they, they pulled Brother Noel. Noel was a nice dude. And they was like, you coming too hard. And I'm like, you don't know this guy. I know this guy's got really transformed. He would have probably popped you upside the head trying to come at me. Back in the day, before the Holy Ghost. And then I said... This guy is a fruit. He's like, it's the way you guys come, though. It's too harsh. I said, we're just taught. We're just preaching the word. And then, honestly, we wasn't even like that loud. It was like, this is what it's saying. And they were like, it's not love. I'm like, I'm reading the Bible. It's not love. I'm like, okay, help me, Jesus. <laughs> I was like, what do we do? It's like a strong delusion. Everybody say delusion. delusion. There is a delusion over people's minds. They can't see because there's something happening spiritually. Amen? There is something happening at work, and then you got to catch it and say, check, time out, and go to the Lord and say, is it like, I feel like I'm just going like this, and ain't nothing hidden. You know what I mean? And I'm getting facts. You know, the Bible talks about casting our what? Pearls before swine. Amen. Meaning, and you got something precious, like be careful who you give it to. Because the swine will look at it and say, gobble, gobble. I'm just going to eat this thing up. Done. All right? Like, swine don't even care about nothing. Like, if you, <laughs> I ain't never been a pig farm, but I've seen them on TV, and they nasty, okay? And there's even, like, like you know, y'all don't even know, they got pig farms a little bit on the outskirts of uh, Las Vegas because of all the people that, you know, when you go to the, what do you call it? The buffets, they get all that stuff, and they toss it in the pig farms. Them pigs will clean it up. Did y'all know that? Some of y'all didn't know that. They don't care what's on that plate. They're going to eat it. It could be somebody's, uh, you know, Power Ranger or something. They just, <laughs> they're going to eat it. <laughs> it don't matter. I'm just saying, like, this is, this is why we have to have discernment. This is why we have to be led by the Spirit. Now, 2 Corinthians 4 says this. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the Word of God. We tell the truth, amen, no matter what. Tell the truth, okay? People either stand for the truth or they're against the truth. And that was the one thing that I had an issue with. And I asked that guy a question. I'll be posting it later because, you know, we, we got we to gotta see all this stuff. But I asked the guy the question. I, I said, is truth relative, right? Like, you know, some people go, it's true for me. It's not true for you. You know, that kind of thing, right? Like case by case kind of thing, right? And then I told him, I said, no. And, then, and I asked him, is truth relative? He said, yes, you can see that throughout time. 
He said, right and wrong, right? It changes all throughout time. And I said, no, no, no. I said, the perception of right and wrong changes over time according to human beings. But does truth change? Because truth is truth, amen? Truth ain't never supposed to change. Right and wrong can change for people, but that doesn't make it right, amen? That doesn't make it the truth. And I said that, and I said, are there any square circles? And he just looked at me like, and I was just like, why are you doing that? Because the reality is a square has to have what? Four, four what? Four sides, and they're all equal, correct? A circle has no sides. So just by putting that analogy out there says that there's an absolute truth with that. Always. Amen? Just geometry. So if that exists in the universe, then it exists somewhere else. It exists everywhere. That means there has to be an absolute truth. So if there's a definition of absolute truth, that means this thing ain't never going to change. It's always that way. And then the Bible says Jesus is the truth, the way, the life. Amen? He's not a truth. And so when I was trying to tell him without, you know, it's like people get frustrated because you answer a question with a what? With, a, with, with an answer. They said, he said, he said, I'm answering. You can't give me an answer. You're just questioning me. I'm like, I'm trying to get you to think deeper than what you're saying. Because the wisdom of this world, guys, cannot even fathom the wisdom of God. Even the Bible says the foolishness of God confronts all the wisdom of this world. Just, and, I, and also I was asking everybody, I was like, let's put all intellectuals all together. Let's put all the philosophers. In fact, let's take every single human being that's ever existed and collect all of our thoughts and say, God, let's go toe to toe together. It ain't even going to happen. You, you understand? The thing that created the other thing has, has authority over it. That's why Paul said, who are you, mere mortal, to think that you can even... Tell God to even question him. But where does that come from? The rebellion, the questioning. The idea that the potter is not in control of the clay. And all of a sudden, the thing that is created, the creation, now has rule over the creator? How does that work? Because something has entered the world. Rebelliousness has entered the world and has caused major deception on created things, on human beings. That deception is right here. So for a man of God, we're supposed to tell the truth before God. All who are honest know this. And then it says, three, if the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, right? He says, it is hidden only from people who are perishing, Meaning, and if they don't get this thing, it's because they're really perishing, you guys. And that's unfortunate. But there's something at work. It says, Satan, who is the lowercase god, that's what it says, who is the god of this world, this age, right now. He's that principality. He's running the evil forces at work. Okay? It says, has blinded. Everybody say blinded. blinded. The minds of those who don't believe. So if you don't even have a true trust in the truth of Christ, right? Remember when we talked about this, we said dealing with strongholds, dealing with ways of thinking. And the Bible says that we're supposed to capture imaginations. Every imagination, everything that's imagined in the human mind, you're supposed to line it up with the truth of Christ. If it don't line up, you're supposed to confront it. You're supposed to actually pull it down and, and break, it, break it apart, <laughs> That's what, that's what the Bible says. But I know people say, well, just let me have my freedom to think. Yeah, you have your freedom to think, but it still does not put you in the place of morality. Morality means there's an absolute right and an absolute wrong. Correct? So some people say, well, it's okay for human trafficking. And other people say, it's terrible. It doesn't make it like, oh, well, that guy, in his case, it's okay. And that guy, it's in his. No, no, no. It's wrong, period. All the time. Amen. You understand? And this morality doesn't come from me and you, you guys. It comes from something outside of us. It's objective. Okay? Not subjective. It's basically saying that we have a moral giver. Our creator. You know what most people hate? Why they can't stand Christianity or they can't stand those that believe in Christ? Because we're confronting the evil and the sin in their lives. That's the truth. We're dealing with the thing that we all got to deal with. 
It ain't got nothing to do with all throughout history. What does it have in common? I should have told the guy, I said, sin, that's our issue. <laughs> all throughout history, black, brown, white, whatever you are, you are, you've dealt with sin. Everybody has disobeyed God in some capacity. And so God is deciding, he's the deciding, he's the judger or the um, final authority. He's the final authority in all things. And the delusion that people are under right now is swaying them to this place of, ah, I'm fine, I'm cool. Don't tell me about Jesus, don't tell me about nothing. But there gets to a point, thank you, Holy Spirit, there will get to a point where God is going to step in and say, okay, well, I'm going to handle all this now. Kind of not to say it like this, I'm going to speed the process up a little bit. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> and we're going to read that process, amen? amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. You guys should hold on, 2 Corinthians 4. It's a real good chapter. Um, but when it's saying that Satan is actually influencing the, the blinded minds of those who don't believe, it says they are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. In 2 Thessalonians 2, or chapter 2, 7 through, was it, 7 through 12, there's a moment um, that Paul starts to essentially give this church kind of a heads up. And say, look, what you guys are going to see in the future is not going to be like, see, and, and most of our minds and most of the early church mind, they were like, okay, Jesus is coming back. We have an opportunity to spread the kingdom of God and we're going to build the church and all this other stuff, right? But what did they kept seeing? Persecution. Like things weren't going better for them. They, they, were, they, they were set free. Their hearts were right before God, but then their surroundings, they were noticing something that the people weren't just accepting them that fast, right? It was more like, oh no, the Jews are like, y'all some cult, get up out of here. Y'all that cult that follows Jesus. Y'all worship a man, get up out of here. Idolatry. Boom. They get kicked out. Then they go back to the pagans that worship the sun god and this and that and, and, and Apollos and all this other stuff, right? And Zeus. And they're like, okay, y'all weird, like, no, like, you guys don't do this here, we, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna kick you out of the city, okay? So now they start getting ostracized, all right? And they start to see this, this sin that is within people it is truly like these people's God, that they really actually worship something satanic, something evil, all right? And so this mystery... Paul starts speaking to that congregation because he's trying to encourage them because they're getting, you know, killed. They're getting persecuted for the places that they live. You know, people are like, the moment they find out you're associated being a Christian, you know, or associated with following Christ, you know, people, people are getting dealt with, y'all. I mean, even in 300 AD, or I believe it was, or at least Antipas, we know he was burned alive inside of a, he was cooked alive, literally, inside of a, a bronze uh, bull for casting out demons, all right? Like for literally doing the work of Christ. And that region was, you know, that, that's what they were doing to the Christians, you guys. This thing didn't just come out, you know, because like somebody had a good marketing plan, all right? Like the people were dying for this stuff, okay? This is, this is, real, this is real deal stuff. And they were really, honestly, they're really coming against Satan's kingdom, Okay? They were really doing the work of the Lord, all right? And so Paul tells them, he says, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. What do you guys think the mystery of lawlessness is? Hmm? <laughs> is it the Antichrist? What do you think? Like, like, there, so there's a man of lawlessness, but what's the mystery of lawlessness? What do you guys think that is? Doing their will. So, I mean, what, what is law? Okay, 
Let me break it down. What is lawlessness according to the Bible? Absolutely. Breaking God's law. When, when we talk about law, we're not just saying breaking like, okay, I just ran a, uh, you know, a red light. That's bad, okay? Because we are breaking the laws of the land here. But the laws of Christ or the laws of the Lord have to do with what God deems, right, correct. That's why when I was going back and forth with, that, with the little young dude, you know, at the thing, in so many words I was saying, and, and this is the thing we have to understand. It's like the Ten Commandments came when? Or the 613 Mosaic Commandments came when? Came to Moses, right? This was after the flood, right? But then let me ask you a question. Was it still wrong to murder? How do we know it was wrong to murder? Go back, go back, go back. What happened between Cain and Abel? Was there even Ten Commandments around to look at? But God was hot that he did that, right? He was angry. He said, he said, I see sin. God said to, to Cain, I see sin knocking at the door of your heart. So before he even killed his brother, sin was, was brewing, was stirring up. That's why Jesus said, anyone that hates another person, you become a murderer at what? At heart, right? That was the thing that the guy kept asking your brother, Angel. And he kept saying, so he said, so it's okay for God to kill people? And I said, well, wait a second. I said, kill or, or intention with like, with murderers? I said, Which, what are you trying to say? Like kill a, de a deer to eat some food? It's a little different. You see what I mean? And then he was like, he basically said, I've never killed nobody, and God has committed mass genocide. And I said, when? He goes, the flood. I said, man, I said, Lord, help this son. Help this, help this guy. He said, when is genocide ever permissible? I'm like, if you look, I mean, in the future, God is going to wipe out a lot of people. So, I mean, he's the, and then that's when I said, is God the giver of life? He goes, yes. I said, can he also be the taker of life? Absolutely. You see what I mean? And he said, well, if I create things, I'm going to figure out a way not to kill them. And I said, I said, that's why you're not God. I said, because that's just, that makes no sense. If you create something, you have the ability to destroy it, correct? That's the, and he says, you have kids? And I said, yeah, I have kids. He go, I said, do you have kids? He goes, no. I said, then why are you asking me? <laughs> I was just like, what are we talking about? He said, is it okay for you to kill people and your kids uh, not to kill people? And I said, time out. Like, in my mind, I'm like, you jumping from one thing to the next and didn't establish something. I'm not God. Yes, I'm a father, but I am not a creator. The only reason why we're able to produce is because he created that process. He put it into motion. In fact, if the soul don't go inside of the mother's womb, in fact, he said, I created you in your mother's womb. I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. So now your mind should be blown with that because you existed before you were even in your body because of him the one that you're talking crazy about. Wow. And see, these are things that we don't have no time to talk about because, you know, when we talk to people out there, they got that delusion going on. You see what I mean? They got there's something that's like bouncing off their mind. Mm -hmm. But you got to take your time sometimes to just say, okay, did he really say something that deep? Or was it really just a whole bunch of garbage? It was a bunch of garbage. It was Satan's attempt to try to, you know, like what he does best is distract and distort things, Okay. He tries to, remember, all Satan's objective is, if God said go right, Satan says go left, or don't do nothing. You see what I mean? It's all about rebelliousness towards God. It's all about perversion. It's saying, I want to throw God's order off, right? And that's why the Bible says that Satan was the first to do what? Sin, right? The father of lies. In fact, 1 John says he was sinning from the beginning. You know? That's how y'all thought I was probably... Probably crazy, huh? A little gangster, huh? I was a gospel gangster on them. Because I called him out. Because he said, he said the Lord's name in vain. And then I said, oh, I said, you, I said, use, use the Lord's name in vain. He said, you dang, dang right. Like, he's, he just cussed back at me. And then I said, yeah. I said, you're the son of a devil, like that. I said, I see you. I said, you were sent here on a sign. And then he started just chirping back and forth. And then I said... You don't have the Holy Spirit. You're not born again. It would never, you would never say that. 
into a preacher and I already let him know I was a pastor, correct? And what did he say? He says, what does that mean? I was like, you at the school? What are they teaching y'all? But it's, it's the arrogance, guys. It's a spirit. It's the spirit of the Antichrist. That's really what's at work. The Bible says there's a spirit of lawlessness. That is at work. They don't care about the things of Christ. They will, they will literally uphold. That's why I told him earlier, and I said, that's, what, that's the problem. He said, well, right and wrong is different for everybody. I said, what did Jesus say? Woe to them that call what? Good evil and evil good. That's the state we're in right now. So he's saying this mystery of sin, this mystery of lawlessness, it's ramping up. He said it's already at work. Right? He says he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So some people say that's who? The church? I believe it's the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has been sent down to convict many of what? Judgment. Sin. Right? Sin and judgment and righteousness. Okay? So when people feel that, that's usually when they're squirming. So two things happen. When they see and confront it with their sin, they either humble themselves and then now God's grace can come in, or they do what? You get all proud. And then God has to resist. I don't know why we think somehow, some way, God is just going, like, he already lowered himself. Help me, Jesus. He already lowered himself for humanity. He already took that punishment. So now, if you reject his son, there's no other way. You understand? Somebody, somebody know. Who, who are my Bereans in there? Who knows about that scripture? And it says that it becomes a... Um, it basically, if you reject the son or something about you throw him uh, afresh on the cross, there's another scripture about that. I think it's Hebrews 10. It's either Hebrews 6 or Hebrews 10, one of the two. But it's basically saying, like, if you neglect the son, you neglected everything. That's why Mark 16 said, him that what? Does not believe is already condemned. It's already wrapped for you. You see what I mean? If you don't trust in the reality of who Christ is, that's why I was, I was mentioning Sister May. I said, if you listen, I'm going to have you guys listen to what this guy said when I post it on YouTube. I'm going to make a bunch of shorts out of it, too. It's going to be nice. But it's like a lot of the nonsense he was saying if you really took it and listened to the word of God and said, does this actually attest to what you said about yourself? You catch it? It's not about the dialogue, you guys. It's not about, oh, I need to win this argument to look good. No, Christ is magnified when we stand on his word. Amen? When it's not, it's not my word, it's God's word we're talking about. You see what I'm saying? Because now you're saying, God, we represent you down here. You know, I believe you're going to back us up. You see what I mean? Like, you're going to back up your word. In fact, the Bible says he does. His word will never return void. That's why they get caught squirming. That's why he was going crazy, because those spirits know they hate the word of God. That's why, and the only thing I regret with that whole situation, she's like, oh, you regret calling him the son of the devil? No, I'll call him son of the devil a thousand times if I could. No. You know what I regret? I regret not grabbing that word and just saying, wait there. I don't want to listen to what you're saying. But I gave him an opportunity. I said, do you want to open up the word? He resisted it after several times. Then I pointed to your brother and your brother had the scriptures. And I said, look, look, look. He didn't want to look. And then I said, ah, there you go. You caught. You caught you little red devil. Not him, but the spirits inside of him. I knew I was like, you ain't here for really to learn. You ain't here to be won over. Your distraction, just like I felt in the spirit. And I say, you got to go, man. And then that's when he was like, no, we were having a conversation. I'm like, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no conversation. He said, you can't talk. To, why are you letting him talk to you? Like, I said, I'm his pastor. And he was just like, no, you're just a guy with a microphone. I said, oh, now you're tripping. And then, by the way, guys, if y'all ever see your pastor getting talked to that right way, y'all need to roll up. Roll up like some gospel G's, all right? And just be like, hey, no, 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 we ain't doing that here. No, for real. I mean, he frail. He look like, what, you got Jet Li up in here? He think he's going to Jet Li everybody with his little baby shirt? Extra medium, for real. I was like, man, what's up with him little tiny shirt? But he had, the, he had this food in his hand, too, and I kept saying, Lord, is the food getting cold? Because he needs to go, man. Because I was like, but because I knew, guys, you guys understand, we are battling spiritual forces. Right. Amen? This ain't just human beings. This is spirits moving on minds and hearts. 
And the Holy Ghost should be moving on us. And we should be empowered by His Spirit, by His Word. So when I see this stuff, y'all don't even understand how deep it is. Like, I should do a teaching on it later. So you guys don't understand. The early church, like, I know we, they were getting persecuted. But if you look at 1 John and 2 John, like, they wasn't no punks, okay? Like, what they were doing was they resisted nonsense. They said, no, 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 that's not correct. And they went over stuff. And either people listened or they got mad and, you know, and things happened. All right? But we're not supposed to just be like, oh, yeah, we're going to come in agreement. It's not, no, I'm going to agree to disagree. No, you're wrong. Because there's only one truth. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's only one absolute truth. And maybe you don't think that there is that. Well, I know there's another way. There's another way. No, no, no. There's only one way, really. God is not like, hmm, I'm thinking about a different way up in here. That's why I just share with you guys, square circles. <laughs> There's no way you can say, oh, yeah, we, we can do both. Can't. All right? So God understands that. Now, he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So, as a belief, now, it doesn't clearly expre express this. When I used to talk to my bishop, he's one of my, is my mentor, you know, I would say one of my mentors, but he is the main guy that was over my life, right? That I submitted to and all that other stuff. But one of his teachings, and it was passed down to him, was that the Holy Spirit was going to restrain the sin in this world, specifically the man of lawlessness, okay? And at that time, he's going to pull away, right? So there's a, this is what you guys don't understand. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Do you know the world could be thousand times more destructive and probably already blown up if we didn't have the Holy Ghost here? Do you understand the importance of the ministry of the Holy Spirit? If the Holy Spirit was not here, this world, like, we, we gonna, it's going to be broken into like many different pieces. We're going to have ash everywhere, radioactive material. Y you understand? I don't even know we've, we we... I don't even know if humanity would have gotten that intelligent, honestly, because most of what were you going to say, Jay? I know he was just saying something. No. Anyways, were you saying something? I thought you were saying something. OK, all right. No, because I'll be reading your lips. So <laughs> help me, Jesus. <laughs> be like a lip reader up in here. No, because because something scientific, a lot of scientific inventions have actually come from Christians, all right? Isaac Newton was that, all right? There's different people that have added to innovations throughout the world that were actually believers, okay? And so it's like a lot of the things that we, we know, but what happens over time is evil creeps in, right? Evil creeps in, even when you got these beautiful minds, right, that come together and they said, you know what? I think we need to move these atoms and protons and this, and then now we just figured out how to make a nuclear bomb. You see what I mean? And when will you want to use that? He's like, we should never want to use this thing. But they made it, right? And they created it. And then the United States decided to actually really use it. Okay? And so, like, these are the things where it's like, that sin, that lawlessness. Now, you got all the entire world ramping up for weapons, right? A mass destruction, Right? That's what this, the, all those negotiations is either you put more money in my pocket or you give me some more ways to defend myself because I know you're going to try to roll up on me like you roll up on everybody else. I'm paraphrasing, but that's how countries operate, okay? It's either we conquer and we get some money, right? Or you give us some money, you know, that's why they do the trade deals, all that stuff to keep everybody cool. So the population grows, but then when it goes too crazy, right, then... Sources, resources start going away, and then what do you think happens? People start getting thinking twice, like, man, we ain't be able to survive like this. And then the government got to do what? Start controlling stuff like how they always do. But what is this, what is this government being really controlled by? Y'all catching it? The mystery of lawlessness. There's already a spirit that is anti-Christ already out here that is completely against God's kingdom coming down and setting up shop. Period. 
That's why they don't want no one here to give anybody that good news that Jesus Christ is coming. He's already came. He saves us from our sins, and he's going to actually establish a kingdom here that is never going to perish. Amen? And this is the process we're reading right now. But that's the difficulty is because people are hung up on this kingdom here that's perishing. They're, they're hung up on our governments or on our systems. Good and bad, regardless, they're going to perish. Amen? And so when I was talking to my bishop about this, he was like, he believes the Holy Spirit. Now, there's two things. Because he was more of a, I'm going to just keep it a buck, he was more of a mid-tribulation rapture type dude. Okay? I am not convinced right now that I don't really believe that there's a rapture, if you want to be honest. I believe that, I don't, okay. I believe there's a resurrection. That's what the Bible says. Hebrews 6 says resurrection, does not say rapture. So there is a taking away. There is going to be a changing. But the idea that we are going to be taken away from this calamity just to be, just meet the, and it doesn't even say that we actually go to heaven. It says we go to meet the Lord in the air, right? And so it makes sense because even those two angels or those two men clothed in white, Right before Jesus ascended, they say, why y'all staring? Why y'all Googling up there? He said, don't you know Jesus is going to come back the same way that he left in the air? You're going to see him in the air. You guys are going to be with him in the air. So it's, it's not saying that we're not going to be in heaven because literally heaven, the presence of God, the, the state of heaven is going to be merged here. You understand? And so we're going to be seeing literally a new heaven, a new earth, everything unfold. Right. So we're going to be able to simultaneously. It ain't going to be no more like, oh, this is just far off from us. Everything's going to come close. OK, but it's a process. It's a process before that happens. All right. There's some ruling and some reigning. Everybody say ruling. ruling. OK, there's some ruling and some reigning that has to take place first. Right. When the resurrection hits. OK. Because I think a lot of us think we just go on and doing, we go on to heaven, and then we just, you know, slip and slide, and everything just, <laughs> like, you know, we're just going to be all good, right? It's going to be nice in paradise, okay? Not yet. Not yet. God is actually going to make this earth paradise again. Thank you, Lord. He's going to do something amazing here, and he's going to bring everything together so that we're going to be able to enjoy and rule all of it, okay, with the Lord, okay? Now, it says this here. So we understand. My belief is that he, even though it doesn't explicitly say the Holy Spirit, something, I believe it's the he, because the he has only been described as the Holy Spirit. The church has been described as what? A she, right? As a bride, things like that. So, okay. So I'm believing that the Holy Spirit is actually s slowing down the process. So if we don't have any Holy Ghost on this earth anymore, right? Or the Holy Spirit steps back, from its influence on humanity, what do you think is going to happen? The world is going to go crazy, right? Because now that spirit of the Antichrist that's also in the world, right, is going to move and now influence people even more, okay? Remember, the Bible says the Holy Spirit, for you. if you're born again, right, it says the Holy Spirit, right, can move upon people and also move what? Within them, Right? He says, so if you're born again, he says, the spirit of Christ that's in you, the Holy Spirit, is greater than the spirit at work in the world. You see what I mean? So there is a spirit, Ephesians 2 says it, that is working on hearts, right? And people that refuse to obey God, okay? Amen. That's why I tell people all the time, if you refuse this word, even if you say you a Christian, even if you say if you a Christian, if you, if you refuse one ounce of this word, what the Holy Spirit is really saying and expressing, you are being influenced by Satan, according to the Bible. It didn't just say that you don't believe the word. It says if you refuse to obey it, you will catch it. And angels like, oh, I heard it, but I don't obey it. I hear it, but I don't do it. See what I'm saying? You're being influenced by something. Okay? So, the Holy Spirit, or he that hindereth no more, he who now restrains, will be taken out of the way. What happens? And then the lawless one, and we've identified that, 
as the Antichrist because further on, um, in I believe 2 Thessalonians either 3 or 4 or whatever, Paul talks about him being destroyed by, by, uh, by the Lord Jesus, right? Okay. Recap. How does the Lord Jesus destroy him? By what? Breath of his mouth. Okay. All right. Okay. Now it says this what? He revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth. Help me, Lord. Y'all know I was talking about fasting. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. I was saying we'd be fasting, our breath, breath be like a dragon. Help me, Lord. It says, and destroy with the brightness of his second coming, or of his coming. Is that the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. Okay, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Okay. Now catch that. Remember what I said. This is like a synopsis, right? And then when we read Revelations, it's like we get in details now. See what I mean? Like the how. Now we got the beast coming out of the water and the red dragon giving the power or the whatever, the seven-headed dragon. I think that's what it's called, right? I don't know. You guys don't remind me. Seven-headed dragon, right? Ten horns represent what? Kingdoms and kings and princes, and blah, blah, blah. Somebody gets wounded. That's the Antichrist, right? You know? But essentially, these beasts are all working together. So Satan is giving what? The, the lawless one, power. And he's also giving another beast the ability to do what? Lying wonders. Okay? Now, some people will say, like, this is like, a, they try to say it's like the false trinity. Okay? Because it's like how, you know, we got God the Father, right? God the Son. God the Holy Ghost. Right. And then you got Satan, the the beast. Right. And then the other beast and the other one of the beasts is basically like kind of like the sun. Right. In the sense of he's the Antichrist. He's the human or physical representation of lawlessness on this earth. OK. When Jesus was perfect. Amen. He was not lawlessness. In fact, the Bible says he fulfilled the law. Amen. He said, I, can, I came not to what? Abolish. He said, I came to fulfill. I'm the fulfillment of it. Right? He's basically saying, I'm it. I'm the one who's taking curses away. Amen? I'm the one who's overcoming sin and overcoming death. I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. Does it make sense now? You see what I mean? That's how we're going to connect the dots here. So now Satan is coming in, trying to do his last little hoorah, and now he's using these different entities. He's using this little false antichrist, right? And then he's going to be a world leader, right? Like, and set up his own little temporary kingdom. But who's puppeteering it? Satan, right? And then he has a rep who does all the wonders and the signs, kind of like the Holy Ghost does here. Remember, the Holy, remember Jesus said the Holy Spirit is going to come in my name. He's going to represent me and be aligned with me. That's why we say, test the what? Spirits. By the Holy Spirit. Amen? What spirits are we supposed to test? Demonic spirits. Every spirit. Because there's only one Holy Ghost. Amen? There's not like a second Holy Spirit over here and this. No, only one Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, you know how you know that? We're going to look in the scriptures in a second. The Holy Spirit does the actual signs and wonders. Think about it. The, the men of God and women of God, they're able to prophesy, lay hands on the sick. Those are signs and wonders, right? Call, call all different things down. You know, Peter was what? Healing people with what? Handkerchiefs, right? Or was it Paul? Peter, Peter right? Shadow Peter. The shadow of Peter, Paul's sweat on his uh, handkerchief, right? So Paul's just like, ooh, phew, throw it. People's like, oh, get healed. Now we see it now, and they be like, for two payments of $5.99, you can get this. Mail order right now. Those are people you'd be like, Satan. <laughs> it's an like, antichrist. I blaspheme. Like, that's a straight rebuke. When they don't buy none of that stuff, please. If they serve some cake to you, say, this is an anointed cake. Eat the cake now. You're participating in witchcraft 1,000%. There, that is mixed in the church. We've seen people selling pillows, put a pillow, this Holy Ghost pillow, and it's, it's lay down. And, it, and it, the, the God will give you visions and dreams. No, you're connecting to another spirit. But people are so gullible because why? They don't read this word, y'all. 
They don't have no real teachers. They ain't got the Holy Ghost either. And it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. It's so sad. But this is what's happening. And it's going to ramp up like crazy. He's saying all what? Power, signs, and lying wonders. Right? The whole point is they're not here to tell the truth. They're here to what? Cause deception. Cause delusion. But then something happens. Or God's like, okay, we're going to roll that way? Now watch. It says, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish, because they did not receive, everybody say receive, receive. the love of the truth, that they might be saved. I'm telling you right now, this is the danger zone right here. If you miss this part, now, I'm not talking about y'all, because I actually love the truth. Amen. And we received that. That's why we're saying everybody, we, we preaching the message, born again. We're like, no, Jesus told me to be a Baptist. No, born again. No, I'm supposed to be a Catholic. No, born again. I'm supposed to be this. Born again. That's what you're supposed to be. You see what I mean? Now receive this love of the truth. Who's Christ? Now be transformed. Amen. Become a part of this family. Become a part of this eternal kingdom. He said that they might be saved. Saved from what? Saved from your sin. Saved from death. Saved from hell. In that order. Literally. Because when you resurrect it, there's a good resurrection and then there's a bad resurrection. Okay? And the Bible says, the blessed are those who are a partake of the first resurrection. It says for the second resurrection and all those things are not going to even touch them. OK. So this is why we're trying to get everybody to understand this message and stop playing this weird stuff that we see out there right now <laughs> that I know Satan has messed up a lot of people, man. He's just doing works. And in first first John says that the son of God, Christ Jesus, has come to destroy the works of the devil. He's going to destroy everything that the devil did. You see what I mean? That's his, you see what I mean? That's his goal, okay? That's it. He's, he's, and and someone said, he already did. He already did. Yeah, he, he's still doing it, all right? He's doing it through the Spirit. He did, every, he did what he needed to do on the cross, but Jesus Christ is still at work, okay? Because people are like, it's finished, it's finished. Jesus literally said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. <laughs> like, I still got work to do, all right? I was like, I want to guys teach every, everybody, let's start teaching in context, okay? Or start understanding this in context. He said, and for this reason, for these reasons, right? What happens? So this is what I love about the Lord. And I was talking to you guys, I was talking to Sister May about this. Even in the body of Christ, God will provide warning first. And he uses warning and instruction through his servants, so when he ushers in warning, he's saying, now you are no longer ignorant. Because a lot of people be like, I don't know, I don't know. Then God says, okay, now you do know. And now you have a choice to either love this truth and accept it and receive it or reject the truth. And when you reject the truth, this is what happens. He said, for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion. Everybody say strong delusion. That they should believe the lie. That means the mass amount of people are going to put their faith and trust in whoever this ruler is. And God is saying the moment they say, I don't really want the true Christ and they want another Christ, they're done. And when you see this, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, if you're born again, now you understand why Jesus was saying, preach the good news and make disciples. <laughs> make people that will follow me. Because this is the danger they're under right here. That, that last little moment they have to actually accept the truth of Christ or reject it. The moment they reject it, when God gets involved, you can't undo it. You understand? When God gets involved, literally, there is no undoing this delusion. They're not going to snap out of it and say, oh, 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 I was tripping. Like, wake me up. You ever see people get hypnotized? That's some messed up stuff, huh? 
They'd be like, I can't get hypnotized. They'd be like, oh, I'll sleep. I'd be like, man, I feel like dude got powers, some type of, you know what I mean? Something spiritual. Something that's straight up spiritual when they do stuff like that. And they just, and they just like yank their arm. And I was like, what? I was like, this is demonic. To put people in that position. Or to study people's bodies to the point where they just like, you know, fall into this just like trance. He said they should believe the lie. He said that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth. I got to keep moving because of this little thing. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. And that's basically the thing. You're going to see a theme as we read on into Revelation that you got people that stand for the truth and people that hate the truth. They hate it. They hate it so much that they want to create another truth for themselves. And that's what we call the lie. And God is like, you guys rejected the only thing that could save you. And now I have to step in. He said, I step in and I will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they may be condemned who did not believe the truth. Right? But this is what they, the truth, but they had pleasure. Everybody say pleasure. pleasure. And what? Unrighteousness. They had pleasure in evil. They had pleasure in their sin. In their wickedness. That's what I'm saying. How can you say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but you love sin. You take pleasure in, in, in hatred, in evil things. Well, I believe in God. That don't mean nothing. What are you talking about? The demons believe and they tremble. I thought it was just belief. No, it's trusting and obeying him. That's what belief means. Well, you said believe in, the, in Christ, right? Was it John 3, 3, 16? Whosoever believes in the Son, right? Yeah, did you know what that actually meant? It meant believing in the Son, continually trusting and obeying Him. That's what belief is. You say, yeah, it didn't say obey. It said obey. That's the context, John 3, 36. Whoever believes in the Son will have eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall be what? Sent to destruction. It said it's under God's wrath. Right there. So I always tell people, obedience and belief, they go hand in hand. You can't unlock them. You say, I believe in Jesus. And then Jesus tells you to do something. You say, I'm not going to do it. You don't believe him. You don't believe him. That's why the children of Israel got caught up in that 40, what? 40 years that should have took only 40 nights. Because of unbelief. Unbelief will destroy somebody's way to the promised land. Amen? Y'all caught when I was talking to you guys about that. Remember? On the streets? That's the whole point. This is what's killing people. Now, 1 John 4.2 says, By this you should know. And this is something y'all should memorize, by the way. <laughs> I would take this down as a, one of those scriptures you can go back to. It says, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. It says, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. So the moment you hear people say the, the, the opposite of the truth of who Christ is, you already know it's not the Holy Spirit. Right there, okay? When they get, like I, I, said, I said that, don't I have, a, I have a, like a short that says that? When you get Christ right, you get everything right? <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. Because so many people get Christ wrong, and then that's where everything else falls apart. He said, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Another translation says, but if anyone, if, but if someone claims to be a prophet and does not acknowledge the truth about Jesus, I like that. I like how they worded that, right? How that translation came out because I was like, whoa, that's, that's on point because you're saying if anybody gets Jesus Christ incorrect, there is, they're, they're not really coming from God. You see what I mean? They're not teaching the truth about who he is. Oh, no, nah, he's just a prophet. He didn't overcome sin. He's just a mere man. He's not really God, you know, or they're trying to say, oh, he didn't really die like that. They took his body 
Or, you know, Joe, Joe Winters even believed crazier stuff. I was reading about it, and I was like, what in the world? And they'll say, yes, read the Bible with us. Come. It's like, oh, okay. And then you, like, read it, and you find out they got this whole contorted version of who Jesus is. They say, yeah, he's the son. They're like, did he die on the cross? Well, what happened is his body perished, and then he materialized back. And then when he, they didn't raise up in the day, he materialized back. I said, now that's crazy. So he materialized back into a body, and they say, no, no, no. He, he, he came back and materialized as a spirit form. And then he went back from spirit form into the heavens, and then he turned back to his original self. And I said, like, what's his original self? Uh, Michael the archangel. I said, okay. <laughs> like, what? My, so wait a second. And then the Mormons say, well, Jesus is really just the spirit brother of Satan. And then you're just like, okay, what, what happened? They say, basically, they try to say that there was like a cosmic dice game, right, between Jesus and Satan. And they was like, okay, whoa, 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 seven, what, seven, eleven, what, snake got, oh, okay, you got earth. I was like, I bet if I go to earth, you go to earth, watch. Like, they gonna, I'm going to rule them. And he like, bet. So they go there. And then they're like, it's so off, guys. It's so corny and so off. Because even the original version, I won't bring up that one. Hell and Jesus. I ain't going to bring up that. Y'all look it up another day. I may just say it real quick. But here's the thing. They so off, you guys, that they had older Mormon commercials or cartoons. And they were distinct why the European nation was more favored. Because in the spirit world, before everybody was created, which is, by, by the way, I don't agree with none of this. It's not biblical. There's not even one scripture to attest to this. But they created some other little fantasy world that basically says that before all this was created, there was just a bunch of, uh, a bunch of human beings like this, and they were ruling these different planets, and they became gods. And then, you know, they, that's, it, your, that's your natural progression. You go from human to God, right? And then they said... Your spirit beings, you know, they had an opportunity to go into human beings as God was creating the world. And as he was creating the world, there was a fight in heaven. That's what they say. There was a war in heaven, right? And they said the angels that fought one side and the ones that won end up, their spirit bodies end up going into who? The white people, okay? And then they said the ones that sat out in battle and didn't do nothing became the Negroes, or I mean, the black people. And I was like, what? And I thought to myself, like, now you can see why there's a predominant group when it's like, I'm Mormon, I'm LDS, I'm this. You see why? Because they were taught something that was so heretical, right? It's just like, you see the Hebrew Israelites out there. They like a black version of the KKK. They, they numbers went so low that they said, okay, we got we to gotta try to get the Mexicans in. We got to try to get the Latinos in. We're going to try to get the Native Americans in. And they off. They are so off. It ain't like, like home dude said. He said, he, he, what did he say? Race? He said, you guys are saved by race, not by grace. And it's like, that's off. <laughs> Completely. Because the Bible says it's neither what? Jew nor Gentile. Scythian, Barbian. What? But all in Christ. One new man. That's what we teach the truth here, y'all. If you don't get that, Jesus Christ is the last prototype, the last Adam. He's the last kind of human being. And God is saying, I'm going to birth a whole new family through Christ. Sons and daughters that become new creations in Christ. Catch it. Catch why we teach the truth. And we try to dismantle all the religiosity out there, okay? Because when you see it, you're like, oh, it's bigger. It's kingdom. Yes, it's always been that. Amen? Jesus didn't have no problem with kings and officials. Amen? He had problems with Pharisees all day. Problems with religious people. He was like, y'all got it wrong. He got it twisted. He's like, this is about kingdom here. It's always been a kingdom. This is about ruling. Because Jesus already knew. He was just like, you guys are wicked. You're brood of vipers. He said, you, you are what? Sons of the devil. See, I, Jesus could say, I can say it, right? No, John 8. 
That's what he said. He said, I know who your father is. He said, our father is what? Abraham, Moses, whatever they said. He said, your father is the devil, your children. They, okay, let me, let me move forward. Let me move forward. Does this make sense? Help me, Jesus. I don't try to, try to bash the, the LSD company. Latter-day Saints, right? I call them LSD because I was like, you got to be high to believe in that because that's just, that's craziness. All right, let's move on. Okay, back to Revelation. So we were on Revelation 13. We saw the different beasts come out of the sea, right? We saw the seven heads, the ten horns. We understand even if he's seeing this, he's seeing this in the spirit realm. It's going to translate in this physical world as kingdoms, rulers, the whole nine. And the beast, right, or the dragon, right, is giving the power, okay? So that's Satan. That's the devil. He's giving the power to these ruling authorities, kingdoms, yada, 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 okay? They're going to do stuff. He said he gave them his own, what? He gave the beast, everybody say his own power. Okay, and throne, so authority. And what's that last part? Oh, yeah, and great authority. Okay. So it says, I saw the, uh, that the one of the heads of the beasts seemed, what? What does that say? Wounded, wounded beyond recovery. But the, fa but the fatal wound was healed. Okay, so we see this all happen. The world was marveled because they were like, whoa, he should have died, but he actually lived. Okay. So that's another lying wonder, correct? It says the worship. Y'all seen the parallels, right? From 2 uh, Thessalonians 2 to this, right? I'm just trying to give you guys some heads up so you can see that this is consistent, all right? Just one gives kind of a broad stroke. The other one's starting to get in details. It says they worship the dragon uh, for giving the beast such power and also worship the beast. He said, who is, who is great as the beast? Okay, they exclaim. And what does it say? Who is able to fight him? Okay. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. I don't know why. Jesus just talks to me a little different. When he says, who is able to fight him? I'm imagining Jesus up in heaven like, hold on. Let me get on my, <laughs> let me get on my chair real quick and see what's happening. Because like, who's able to fight the beast? Who's able to? And Jesus just sitting, sitting up on the throne like this, like, all right, just wait. How, how much time we got? Okay. <laughs> Three and a half, 42 months. <laughs> Help me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It says, Then the beast was allowed to speak blasphemies against God, and he was given authority to do whatever he wanted for 42 months. He said, And he spoke terrible words of blasphemy against God, slandering his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Oh, you want to get that. Here, I got you. I got you. I got you. You can go get it. Go get it. Go get it. For our Turn it. Okay. You got it? Okay. All right. Yeah, you got it. And the reason why we address this here is because this all lines up with Daniel. This all lines up with all the prophets that this dude is wicked, okay? He's wicked. He hates God. He hates anybody that's affiliated with the truth of Christ. Trust me. He, I know they're going to try to make it like, you know, he's going to be, oh, be against all those religions. But the reason why he's against all those religions is because he's against the true God, all right? Anything that reverences a creator, he's going to be against that. OK. And here's the thing. The Antichrist agenda is big already. I remember being back in my jobs and asking people and they was having issues because I was management. Then I started serving the Lord and then all oh, you know what broke loose. They couldn't stand. I got baptized, showed up one day. They was like, yeah, we're going to demote you. I'm like, what? And I'm just like, I'm trying to share with you my baptism. And I was trying to act like it was affecting me. I went across the outside, started crying. <laughs> I called my pastor. I said, Pastor, I said, I'm trying to share with him my baptism. He's all oh, young man, young, young man of God. Like, get up. Get, just like, wake up, boy. Like, <laughs> you're going to have to deal with that. He said, don't you know when you do things for the Lord, you're going to get attacked? I said, I don't know none of this. You're supposed to give me a handbook. He said, the Bible. He said, you're in the Bible. Read the Bible. It gave you the handbook. That's the playbook. <laughs> it's like, it, it, like what, what does it say? Hold on. Give it to me, Lord. What does it say? Is it, is it, is it one of them? Whatever the one, I think it's uh, 2 Timothy or something. It says, all that want to what? Live a godly life will deal with persecution. <laughs> it says, must. It's like, one of you guys will find it. But it's like, I couldn't avoid it. All right? So it's like, that's, 
That's the thing. Like, you live for the Lord, that's just what's going to happen. All right? Now, it says, the beast was able to what? Wage war against God's holy people to conquer them. And he was given authority to rule over every tribe, nation. Okay. It says, and the people who belong to the world worship the beast. Okay. So, most likely, they're part of this great delusion. Okay. Because once this hits, they've rejected the way out. They've rejected the way. They've rejected the truth. They rejected what? The life. Okay? So they are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life. Makes total sense. Because how would you be able to be registered in heaven if you already rejected the one that gets you in? Amen? You said, I'm good. I'm off of him. They just like, oh. So then God's like, okay, you belong to this world then. Fine. Like, that's what the Bible says. Anyone who belongs to this world is an enemy of me. Y'all catch it? I know we talk about it all symbolic, but that's what we're saying. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This is what he just told me. He said, tell these people, stop being connected to this world. You're going to get swallowed up in it. That's the danger. We're literally telling people, get out of this world, get into Christ. We're representing another, another kingdom. That's why Colossians 3, he kept saying, think about the realities of heaven. Think about the realities of your new identity in Christ. Think about the realities that you have become something else. And then some people like myself, I would hear this message and I'd be like, ah, and then I always knew I was called to this. And then one day I stopped fighting. Help me, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I repented. I got baptized. I filled the spirit. I kept pursuing the Lord and I took this word serious. And I was no longer looking at it like it was just like, oh, this is just nice little philosophy, you know, for my life. <laughs> no, this was like, help, emergency. <laughs> like, I need help right now. Amen. And then it became relationship. Then I was like, oh, God, you speak here. You speak. And then you get so much in this word, this thing just starts to flow. You see what I mean? The Spirit of God starts to make, connect all the dots. It shows you. It, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will give you what? Remembrance. Do you guys know that? The scripture? Even when, he, when, even when Jesus was telling the, the, the disciples when they were going to get persecuted, he said, y'all don't even need to think about what you're going to say. He said, the Holy Spirit's going to give it to you. He's going to bring back remembrance of the things I said. You see what I mean? So Holy Spirit, like I said, his work on this earth and also the scriptures, everything goes hand in hand. I tell people all the time, they say, how do you know it's the Holy Spirit? I said, does it line up with the word? No? Okay, it's not the Holy Spirit then. <laughs> Are you sinning? Yes, it's not the Holy Spirit. You blaspheme? It's not the Holy Spirit. It's going to stand the truth about Christ. We just read it in the chapter, right? It will test of the truth about Christ, Okay. Now, it said they're the ones whose names are not written in the Lamb, but the Lamb. Okay, okay. We know that part. Anyone of ears should hear and understand. Okay. It says, anyone who's destined to prison will be taken to prison. Anyone destined into what? Be killed by the sword? By the sword. It says, this means that God's holy people must endure persecution patiently and remain faithful. Okay. So we talk about people of the world or people of God. People of God. You could say, no, it's the Jewish people. All I know is that this next thing is telling me that there is a group of folk that is connected to the body of Christ. Okay? Whether you want to say it, this is how rapture people folk, Lord, forgive me, but rapture folks say it this way. Well, there's our group, okay? We get Shot up in the air and we meet with the Lord. And then we're having breakfast and on, on clouds. And, you know, we have the, the ceremony and the marriage supper. And that goes on for seven years. And then all the other, you know, we call it the tribulation saints. Those tribulation saints, they're the ones that go through this. But we got to be up here because they're the ones that decided not to believe in Jesus. And then they get to believe in Jesus later. And I'm like, well, how does that work if he that hindereth no more, the Holy Spirit is not really around like that? So, we're, we're, like, how does this work? So, they get to basically suffer, and y'all get to reign in the sky, but 
The Bible don't even say that y'all reign in the sky or have, you know, a nice little wedding banquet. That wedding, by the way, that wedding banquet is described way differently. Like the, 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 the supper or the marriage, uh, the marriage uh, 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 supper, like, I'm going to get to that later. You guys are going to find out it's way different than what y'all thought, okay? Because we thinking, like, we about to have, like, IHOP in heaven or something. Like, you know, we just going to meet with the Lord and everybody got their little, it's like, what you want? It's like, it's like, like the angels asking y'all, like, y'all, y'all want grits? Chorizo? What, was your, what y'all want? Like, <laughs> like, what you want on the side? Be like, we can eat in these bodies. Okay, I don't know. It's like, whatever. But I take some gravy, some country. No, nah. no, it's not like it's not like that. But that's the picture that they paint. Well, there's a whole other group that gotta suffer. But it's like none of us ever considered that it possibly could be us. You never put it in your mind that it could possibly be those that are actually alive when Christ returns. That those that actually have to endure. Because the Holy Spirit, it, didn't, it, didn't, it said the Holy Spirit is restraining him, and he's going to be what? Removed or taken away. Now, my bishop, my pastor, he taught more like a mid-trib rapture kind of viewpoint or eschatology. And he would say, well, if you're filled with the Spirit, you get quickened, you're take, taken away. And then the rest of those saints, that's what they got to go through, right? The ones that basically ain't filled like that, right? So why would they say that? Well, because it comes from he. It comes from Ephesians 2 that talks about when you're filled by the Spirit, you've been quickened, okay? You've been, and so one of the things that they would do is they would be like, hey, we need to get people filled with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> like a lot, right? So that they can get prepared, right? And so that's what that was. But still, even with that, even with that, it's not exactly clearly giving you like a, this is an exact mid-trip moment, you know, pulling away into the air kind of thing. You see it, like I said, Revelations 11 kind of gives you something that there's a time where there's going to be rewards and all this stuff, but then it also tells us in the hour of trial that's going to hit this world that Christ is going to keep us and protect us, not actually take us out of the world. You see what I mean? You don't see that. So that's, these are the things that have people been debating for years, but when you really look at these scriptures, you see that there is going to be a group of people, God's holy people, that must endure. And it lines up more with the early teachings of the Christians that it was about the resurrection. They were awaiting the resurrection and and were told to endure persecution. And not only were they told to endure persecution, that if they happen to die, right, their souls will immediately be with the Lord. But upon the resurrection, they will what? be rised up into those new bodies. Their bodies will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And the Bible says those that are alive will what? Be, be, be changed as well. But it says, but the dead in Christ have to rise first. So those that have passed, are, their bodies have to be changed or quickened by the Holy Spirit. Okay? So the Holy Spirit has a lot to do here. All right? So that's why I was thinking like, okay, well, the Holy Spirit has to quicken the person's bodies. When does that happen? Is he still here? Where does he go? All I know is that the Holy Spirit is holding back the Antichrist from going crazy right now. Okay? Or the he that hindereth no more. I don't think it's the church. Because if the church is... Come on. Like, we got to make up our minds what the church is. The church is either he or the church is either a bride. Okay? And how is the church really holding the Antichrist back? Because let's, let's go with that theory just for a second. Even though it's explicitly in the... In the and uh, explicitly, <laughs> explicitly in the text, it says that he that hindereth no more. Wouldn't the church try to stop the Antichrist if that was the case? If we had the power to stop him, right? The church would, would try, okay? But we see something happen here where he's given authority to make war against the saints. It says make war against the holy ones. So it's like, how can we stop him now? He that hindered, no, it, it's the reality is, it's, it's the Holy Spirit's work, you guys, to convict sin, to convict lawlessness, okay? As God wants this program to go forward, that's what's going to happen. Holy Spirit's going to draw back, all right? 
And the Antichrist spirit, the spirit of this world, is going to go become dominant on this earth. Okay? It's going to become so dominant and God's, uh, God's justice is going to go forward. It says, He exercised all authority of the first beast, required all the earth to worship the first beast, right? I think we saw this part, right? He shows a fire flash from down from heaven, right? He's showing false miracles, lying wonders, right? He makes the statue talk, all that stuff, right? And then he tells the people to worship the statue, and if they don't, they're going to be what? Killed, right? Then he tells them also to do what? Take a mark. Right? Small and great. Rich and poor. Free and slave. He says, so they take a mark on their forehead and, or, or on their hands. They can't buy anything, sell anything, the whole night. They're, basically, they're out of this system. Okay? You can't survive without actually pledging, literally, allegiance to the beast. Okay? So... What happens? And he says, wisdom is needed. Talk about the number 666. Now, now it directs to another episode here. So that's, that's happening. Then Jesus deals with his 144,000. They never lied. Okay, the 144,000 are not Jehovah Witness. Amen? Hallelujah. They're actually from the tribes of Israel. We see this earlier in the chapters, right? You guys seen that? 12, was it 12,000 here, 12,000? Like that, right? Okay. I just want to make sure. I was like, y'all, y'all scholars out there. Amen. Okay. Then it says, they get to basically sing with the choir in heaven, right? And then they get to learn the whole thing, right? They get to sing the new song. Let me see if I can just go forward with this real quick. Okay. Beautiful noises made in heaven. Um, more signs start to follow. Okay? They talk about Babylon. We said Babylon could be different things. Some people think Babylon is what? A country. It could be a system or a way of government. The only city, now it says this great city. Now, original Babylon is what? In Iraq, right? But let's keep it a bug. Iraq ain't everywhere, okay? Like, the United States is everywhere, okay? Let's be honest. Who's the country that's most involved in everybody's stuff? U.S. of A. Okay? So, whether or not that's them or not, but all we know is that Israel is spoken of, and then all of a sudden, you know, Babylon is spoken. Or maybe the system, maybe the system of government gets corrupted. Right? I'm not too worried about that because I already know. It, the Bible says that everything you see is, is temporary. Amen? Amen. It's going to be destroyed. So, it's like, that's a process that we should already be anticipating. OK, I don't I don't like I'm not the look, I'm not the guy with the eschatology that's trying to write like, you know, 20 books on it. OK, <laughs> 20 books so you guys can go to the conferences and talk about stuff like this. All right. I'm trying to get the guy to sum this thing up to put a fire under your behind to say, hey, I need to reach out some souls. I need to get these people from actually having to deal with this great delusion that's going to come, because once they reject Jesus, it's a wrap. There's no like, set. when he's second come, they say, oh, yeah, yeah. No, the Bible says that they're going to be trembling. They're going to be running. You know what the Bible says? We say, I run to the hills and come with my help. No, they're going to be running away from Jesus to them caves. Okay? Crying out. They're going to be afraid. Watch. Now, it says they must what? Look at it. Look at that part. It says anyone who worships the beast and his statue and accepts a mark on his forehead or on the hand, right? So it says, or on the hand. Must drink the wine of God's anger. Everybody say God's anger. God's anger. Okay. So there is a delusion that God is going to introduce. And then there's also bowls. Everybody say bowls. bowls. Okay. It's like, what are you talking about bowls for now? <laughs> are you talking about teriyaki bowl? How many Jesus? Chipotle bowl? She never liked to go to Chipotle. How many Jesus? Y'all some Chipotle eaters over there? Nah, not really. Some people are like, mm, no. Nah. We said that one dude, Ellie, used to be like, man, Chipotle. We'd be like, we're going to Chick-fil-A. He'd be like, nah, I'm with Chipotle. I'm like, you can go to Chipotle then. Do your thing, man. What was that one place that we used to get? The, the what do you call it? They have all the little half and half or whatever. Help me, Jesus. What was that? Flame boiler? Help me, Jesus. 
Yeah, see, you know, they be tripping. They put all that rice and then they weigh it and you be like, no, nah, put some more meat on that. What you doing? You know, they be like, oh, that's too much. Like, what you doing? <laughs> like, like, I'll be like, half rice, half vegetables, half, half, actually double, double this. Nah. Anyways, the bowls of God are no joke, okay? And what he has fixing up in heaven, oh, sakana bo shenemene. It is no games, all right? God is brewing something, literally. It said, must drink the wine of God's anger. It has been poured full strength into God's cup of wrath. And they will be tormented with fire and burning sulfur in the presence of the Lord. What? Sorry. Of the presence of the holy angels and the Lamb. All right. It says the smoke of the torment will rise forever and over, ever, right? And they'll have no relief. Okay. Now, what does that sound like, guys? That sounds like craziness. That sounds like the lake of fire. It says they're, they're, it's going to be forever and ever, constant. The lake of fire is not hell, you guys. It's worse than hell. Because hell is actually a containment center, and hell is thrown into the lake of fire, according to this. People are like, hell is hot? Yeah, and the lake of fire is hotter because it burns up hell. It's, it's, it's so hot. Whatever is going to happen, it, they said they will be in torment, and the smoke of their torment will rise forever. The stench of it is going to rise. That already tells me it's low. That it's somewhere low. Right? Because it ain't high. <laughs> if it's high, it ain't rising, right? It's like, it's like, this is what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. When the Bible says that God, Jesus, is above, right, all authority in the heavens, on the earth, and below the earth. Right? Remember, everything that is literally wicked is being chained and is deep down in what? The earth somewhere, right? Or the bottomless pit, right? That's what the demons scream and say, don't send me to the abyss. Don't send me to the bottomless pit. And Jesus is like, yeah, okay. But that's what we send them. It says, this means that God's holy people must endure persecution, patiently obeying his commands and maintaining their faith in Jesus. This is a part of it. This is a part of it. He says, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this down, blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. And says the spirit, um, they are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their what? Hard work for their good deeds will follow them. He said, then I saw a white cloud and seated on the cloud was someone like the son of man. He had a gold crown on his head and a sharp sickle. Okay. Then another angel came from the temple and shouted to the one set, sitting on the cloud, swing the sickle for the time of harvest has come to crop on, uh, on earth is ripe. Okay, this is mentioned by Jesus. Jesus says at his appearing, what happens? He said the angels reap. You guys know, you know about that? They separate the what? The wheat from the tear or from the chaff, right? Or the lamb from the goats, okay? That's actually supposed to happen like that. That's why I've been trying to get us like, I don't, I, I don't know how that happens. It's, it's like either there's, like I said, multiple harvests, and then we got a whole nother group up there just watching us like, okay, you know, or we up there watching them, but it, it doesn't, it, like I said, it doesn't really make sense, all right? When you really see it this way, it makes more sense that Christ is going to return, it's going to be a glorious appearance, the angels are going to, separate immediately people that are with him and people who are not with him. Okay? It says, So one sitting on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the whole earth was harvested. After that, another angel came from the temple in heaven, and he also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel who had power to destroy with fire came from the altar. He shouted to the angel with the sharp sickle, Swing your sickle, uh, now to gather the clusters of grapes from, uh, from the vines of the earth, for they are what? Ripe for judgment. 
So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and loaded the grapes into the wine press of God's wrath. Okay, they're getting prepared for something. Okay? The grapes were trampled in the wine press outside the city, Yowzers, and the blood flowed from the wine press in a stream about 180 miles long and as high as the horses was brittle. Bridle? Who ever rode a horse, horse before? I rode a horse? Right. Right? Even, even as a little pony. Like, mm. like, <laughs> like, but I'm saying, where's that thing? It's right here, right? Okay. That's pretty high if the blood is this high on the planet. 180 miles long? That's a lot of carnage. See, that's why I'd be telling you guys when that guy was like, when is genocide? I'm like, brother, you don't want to read the rest of this book then and see what's going to happen. Like, I know people are like, why, why, why? I'm telling you. You reject the son, you rejected everything. And you pledged allegiance and you don't think them same people was happy that the two false prophets, or excuse me, Lord forgive me, the two witnesses were destroyed and then they start to Glorify the Antichrist, take a mark, take an allegiance, blaspheme God, give an, a statue worship and not actually Christ in heaven. They do all this blaspheming and then expect at the last moment Jesus to change his mind? God's law, oh, God's merciful. Yeah, and God also says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. That's why I was trying to tell you guys the nature of God. He is both kind but he's also severe. But when you reject his kindness, you see his severity. Okay? That's the justice of God too. Because if he's just, he has to make correction. He has to bring destruction. It's, it's like him to be just, it's like everybody saying, oh yeah, like I'm not saying that nobody can ever be redeemed. But if somebody's like, yeah, I didn't kill a thousand people and... um. Uh, and, and they maybe smuggle like 100,000, you know, people through human trafficking or something. Or they like, you know, raping kids or whatever. And then they don't ever, ever want to get redeemed. And you ask them, would you do it again? They say, I'd do it over and over again. Okay, this is like, you already made your mind up. You see what I mean? There are people like that, guys. Do you understand that? God's like, I can't even let a speck in Adam an uh, I owe whatever, a crumb, enter into this new kingdom. No sin, no evil will come into this thing. Everything that's eradicated. I only want people that actually came through the sun and were faithful to me. He said, I only want those that have been purchased by the blood of the lamb, born again into this family, sanctified by my Holy Spirit. So now they are part of this thing and they remained faithful means they want to be with me. That's why I tell people, this ain't, guys, this is, come me, Lord. I know people get bagged up on me because they're like, why do you always say that? I'd be like, Jesus Christ did not come to establish Christianity. Please hear me. They'd be like, what? What? Blasphemy? No, listen to me. We set up Christianity. We set up our religious, we put that stuff together, you guys. Jesus Christ was saying, I am coming. He says, repent, a kingdom is coming. In fact, it's near you. He like, <laughs> Holy Spirit inside of me. He said, he's going to dwell in you. Then you're going to be connected to headquarters in heaven. And then we're going to establish this thing on this earth. Like, y'all understand? Here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the, here's the clarity. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is not going to come down and be like, give me your flag of Christianity and go like this. Christianity, we're here. You see what I'm saying? It's not that. That's you. That was your version of what you thought it was supposed to be. And God is like, no, 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 no. My kingdom. My kingdom, the rulership, 
Not just the people that agreed and had this mindset and all this theology. He's like, no, no, no. My rulership is here. You're not planting your flag. I'm stepping down and being king. And you're supposed to be <laughs> my servants. Help me, Jesus. It is honor and a war, and even the ones that has seated in heavenly places, even the 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 uh, the, the the twenty four elders, they cast their crowns, and we're gonna get crowns, amen. He said we're running the race to what? Receive a crown, amen. What does a crown mean? Mean a, cr a victor's crown, a crown that gets rewards, a crown that means that we're royalty, amen. That's what Galatians says, that even if you're children, right? He said, if you're a son, you also become an heir. Heir to what? A kingdom. <laughs> like, so God is just basically setting up shop and saying, hey, man, we got to get rid of this. We got to deal with this evil problem, okay? This sin problem. They rejected the way out. This is the consequence. He said, him that does not believe in the son is already what? Condemned. This is the condemnation. And this is the physical one, and then the soul one will come up. All right, let's see if we can get through this. Okay, he says, I saw in heaven another marvelous event, great significance. The seven angels were holding the seven what? Everybody say last plagues. Last plagues. Okay, I'll be like, ooh, thank you, Lord, last plagues, okay. <laughs> Y'all like, why you, why you be laughing? See, because it's like this. It's really good to know you're on the right side. Help me, Jesus. Amen. It's extremely good to know. You're on the right side. All right? If anybody needs to, uh, what do you call it? You guys remember, get the keys. Yeah. And, and bring them back, please. <laughs> I want him saying, oh, and then watch the keys be gone as soon as you walk outside. <laughs> oh, maybe the other people don't know. No, it's Okay. Did you put, anybody put a thing on the door? No. Help me, Jesus. That would have been, you know, wise. <laughs> it's like... Anyway, there's no water. All right, let's keep reading. We're about to wrap up. It says, the seven last place which would bring God's wrath to completion. Okay. I saw before me and seemed to be a glass sea mixed with fire, and on it stood all the people who had been victorious over the beast and his statue. And what? Oh, sorry. And the number representing his name. They were all holding harps and what? That God had gave them. So this is victorious people. You're gonna, these are the ones that overcome. All right. It says, and they were singing the Lord of Moses. Or excuse me. They were singing the song of Moses. I can't stand that thing right there. Help me, Jesus. They were singing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. It said, great and marvelous are your works, O Lord, uh, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O king of the nation. I think I'm going to try to just read out of here and see if it works. All right, okay. King of the nations, who will not fear you, who will not fear you, uh, who will not fear, uh, fear you, Lord, and glorify your name. For you alone the, are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous deeds have been revealed it says then i looked and saw that the temple in heaven god's tabernacle was thrown wide open it said the seven angels who were holding the seven plagues came out of the temple they were clothed in spotless white linen and gold sashes across their was it say chest okay then one of the four living beings handed each of the seven angels a gold bowl filled with the wrath of God. Everybody say the wrath of God. Wrath of God. Okay, so there's something in here, in heaven, that is about to get poured out. Okay? Who lives forever and ever? The temple was filled with smoke from God's glory and power. No one could enter the temple until the seven angels had completed pouring out the seven plagues. Seven plagues in this bowl, right? Okay. So, or some, some people say vials or whatever, okay? 
It says, Then I heard a mighty voice from the temple say to these seven angels, Go your ways and pour out to the earth the seven bowls uh, containing God's wrath. So uh, John is seeing all this being prepared in the heavens. Okay? So nothing that happens on this earth is like, oh, God be like, oh, you know, woke up like, what I miss? Like, <laughs> that's not what's happening. Everything is set. Okay? There's so many things we don't understand about how the dimensions work, the seen and the unseen, principalities, all this stuff. Okay? We, we, just, we don't know yet. We don't know yet, but we will. All right. So it says, so the first angel left the temple and poured out his bowl on the earth and horrible, malignant, what, sores broke out on everyone who had the mark of the beast, okay? Who what? Worshiped the statue or his statue. Okay, so this stuff, this stuff that's happening, is this for people that repented and got born again? No. No. This is very important we understand this. Because this is what people would try to scare people into. <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 that's not what it is. Okay? The, 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 the keeping, this is God saying, I'm keeping you from this and I'm keeping you from, uh, from eternal wrath. You see what I mean? So physical wrath and eternal wrath. Now, persecution? Nah, he said you do persecution. Amen? Amen? Jesus said, be of good cheer. What? I've overcome the world. He said, in this world, you'll deal with tribulation. You're going to deal with a form of anguish and persecution. We see it in different ways. But he never said that you'd be destined for wrath. Amen? Amen. There are some people destined for wrath. Okay? He says, then the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea. Now, what happened to the sea, you guys? It says, it became like the blood of a, uh, of a corpse, and everything in the sea died. Okay. Shamu, all the, the, the whales. Okay? Um... Jonah's well, whatever. All them things out there died, okay? So it's like, this is, this is what's going to happen. Then the third angel poured out his bowl and the rivers and the springs, and they became blood. Okay, so you go out to Chattanooga, Tennessee, or you go out to, like, we're going to go white water rafting. And then you're going to say, oh, this ain't white waters, this is red water. <laughs> it's blood. Just imagine that. It looked like blood now. It's like, oh, this ain't, this is, this is, it's almost like Exodus over again, huh? It says, look, look, at, look, look what happens. It says, and heard the, the angel who had authority over all water. Right there, you can say, time out. <laughs> there is an angel that is over water, has authority over water. That makes sense because what? Satan is a morning star. He's the prince of what? The air. Help me, Jesus. See, I'm so saying, when we see the Lord, it, all is going to be downloaded. We're going to be like, oh, I get it now. So this one's over this and this one's over that. And see, that's the problem. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is trying to say, I created all that. The problem is, is some of that stuff left, rebelled, and now they want worship from you. That's why we got all these different religions out there. These are principalities behind the scenes. Amen? Is this making sense? Help me, Jesus. How many people are we telling you to, to worship what? Y'all ain't seen, y'all ever seen that movie Avatar? Y'all seen that one when they all blue people? You know? And they worship in the water. Marine kingdom. Help me, Jesus. Y'all get it. Y'all get it. Y'all remember deliverance? Help me, Lord. It's like this. They want to worship this God. The God is Mother Nature, but they call it what? Awa. Say, like we, we worship Awa, right? And then how do they connect to that Mother Nature? They go to that big tree of life thing, right? And they lay down on it, and then it just, the tentacles touch it. The roots, the roots touch the body, and then they absorb, and then it can what? Take the person's soul, and they'd be forever with the consciousness of the earth. They're telling you this stuff. They're telling you this stuff even through the movies. But it's like, God is not saying, so when people say, oh, Mother Nature, there's no Mother Nature, but there are spirits that can influence 
the natural world. But see, the thing is, God is saying, hey, like, he's given jurisdiction. Now, there's, there's literally, it boils down to two categories. You're either with God or against God. All right? There are people that, things that are going to rebel and things that are going to last. All right? It says, you are just, O God. Right? That's what it says. Oh, sorry. O Holy One, who is and, and who always was, because you have sent these judgments. It's almost like the angels were like, thank God, finally. Like, <laughs> you're starting to bring these judgments on these folks. Okay? It says, since they shed the blood of your holy people and your prophets, you have given them blood to drink. It is their what? Just reward. So they can't even find a bottle of water. They're going to have to, he said, you've given them blood to drink. Look at, the, look at the irony of it all, right? It says, and I heard a voice from the altar saying, yes, O Lord God, the Almighty, your judgments are true and just. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun. And what happens to the sun, you guys? Causing it to scorch everyone with its fire. Okay, now some people say, see, I told you, solar flares, the solar flares are going to come, right? You get people like that. Y'all never heard of that? Help me, Jesus. They're like, oh, it's going to get scorched. Like, was that, was that one movie that said, the sun's coming closer? Y'all internet, y'all understand, the sun came close. First thing, the sun can't even come close like that, all right? But let's say it did, right? It's like perfectly positioned where one side of the planet is not like burnt to toast, and the other side is like not frozen, Okay, so it's like all God is going to allow is cosmic events that these angels and angelic beings and the most high heavens are going to alter. Okay, it says everyone was burned by what? This blast of heat and they cursed the name of God. Okay, you see what I'm saying? You go through all of that and they still didn't change their mind. Who control what? Over all these plagues, they did not repent of their sins and turn to God and give him glory. It says, then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of what? Of the beast. And his kingdom was plundered or plunged into darkness. His subjects ground their, te uh, ground their teeth in anguish. Okay. Does this line up with what was said in Daniel? It says that that last guy, his reign is not going to last that long, right? So this is what happens. It says, and they cursed the God of heaven for their pains and son, or excuse, for their pains and source, but they did not repent of their evil deeds and turn to God. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl of the great Euphrates River, okay? And it dried up so that the king from the east uh, could march the armies toward the west without hindrance. And I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs leap from the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. What are the evil frogs, guys? There's these, these evil spirits, demonic spirits, basically. They are demonic spirits who work miracles and go out to all the rulers of the world to gather them for battle against the Lord on that great judgment of the God, God all, all uh, excuse me, of God the Almighty. Okay, so let me wrap this up real quick. A bunch of bowls are gonna hit, people are gonna get mad and say, God is doing this to us. Let's form an army. Okay? Let's get everybody together and see if we can make it, <laughs> make it uh, whatever. They're gonna make it happen, okay? But it's like they're foolish. Because this is what's going to happen. You're going to have one group assembled on this, on this earth. Just imagine it, right? Like how they even think it's going to happen. You're going to have a whole group of people saying, let's come against that guy that's doing all that stuff. And then we get snatched up and we in the air changed on some horses like, what's good, right? And then all of a sudden people got swords and and I don't know, I don't know if they get ninchucks. I don't know what they get. But I'm saying, whatever they get, we're going to be with the Lord, looking down. That's why I always tell people, if you think about it, they're going to think it's like some alien invasion, okay? Like, it's just like, what's this big, huge crowd of holy ones in the air with the Lord? It's just called. 
It's his chosen. It's his faithful. That's who actually is going to be with him. It says, look, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are what? Watching for me. He says, who keep their clothing ready. Everybody say ready. ready. So they will not, what does it say? Have to walk around. Look at me. I got to walk around. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> walk around naked and ashamed. Okay. There's another scripture that talks about the, the, the clothing being soiled. And the demonic spirits gathered all the rulers of the armies to, place, uh, to a place with the Hebrew name is Armageddon. Okay. So Armageddon is not just some weird movie <laughs> where they're waiting for what? Uh, 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 a meteor to hit? No, please. Armageddon is a battle, all right? It's just going to be a battle there, all right? It says, Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a mighty shout came from the throne in the temple, saying, It is what? Everybody say, finished. finished. Okay. It says, Then the thunder crashed and rolled and lightning flashed, and a great earthquake struck, the worst since people were what? Placed on the earth. So is anybody catching up what happened? For, uh, water turns to what? Blood, oceans, rivers, everything dies in the sea. No more animal planet. You just get over it, all right? There, there ain't going to be nothing out there, okay? So this world is literally getting ready to be burned up, okay? It says, The great city of Babylon split into three sections, and the cities of many nations fell into heaps of rubble. So there's going to be a great earthquake that's going to cause literally areas to be broken apart, okay? So God remembered all Babylon's sins, and he made what? Her drink the cup that was filled with the wine of his fierce wrath. And every island, every island disappeared, okay? So my plans to chill in Hawaii is, you know, is gone. <laughs> Help me, Lord. <laughs> Every time I read that, I think about that, like, I want to go, I want to just wait for Jesus to be chilling in Hawaii, just like this. And he'd be like, you know, that all them islands going to go now. That's what it said. If, 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 if we don't go before then, right? It says, every island disappeared and all the mountains were leveled. What happens? All the mountains become what? Flat. flat. I know the flat earth, earthers love this. They'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> All the flat earthers out there be nuts with that one. It's like every island disappears. Can y'all imagine that? Everything, it's, the world is going to look different. Watch. There was a terrible hailstorm, right? Is that what it says? Hailstorm, and hailstones weighing as much as 75 pounds um, fell from the sky onto the people below. They cursed God because of the terrible plague of hailstorm. Now look at this. It says, one of the seven angels who had poured out the seven bowls came over and spoke to me. Come with me, he said, and I will show you the judgment that is going to come on the great prostitute. Okay, we're going to end there. Um, this is what I want to tell you guys. Blessed are those <laughs> that are persecuted for my name's sake, for theirs is the kingdom. Can I just tell you guys that by the Spirit of the Lord? You know why God wants to show us this? He's saying, vengeance is truly mine, says the Lord. He said, you getting mad at people on the come up because they just gaining all this wealth and all this stuff and wickedness. And you got Diddy and all them little weirdos out there. Right. And God's like, I got a place for them. Don't worry. You know what I mean? I got a place for them. You just do your job here. You, you don't be trying to get back like t the way you get back is win souls. You see what I mean? Win souls for the kingdom. Teach the truth of Christ. This is going to happen to the planet. This is going to happen to the inhabitants that belong to this world and they don't belong to the things of heaven. God is saying you need to get born again from above. So now we're from above, amen? Now we're connected to a whole other kingdom and trying to tell people, hey man, the man from heaven came down to rescue us. Grab his hand. Become born again. All right, let's, let's get this right. Let's stand. You guys prepare just for a moment. Jeremiah, can you put the thing here? You guys prepare to, to sow into the kingdom, this beautiful kingdom. It's like, I don't even know if they're going to have currency on the earth, you know? 
I don't even think we have to worry about that. Like, they're just going to know. I can't wait to get to the rest of this, you guys. I'm telling you. We're going to have a major, major, major beautiful opportunity. Um, and, like, when I see all this, I'm like, man, this world don't even know what's about to happen. But that's what we're trying to just get them to, like, recognize their sin, okay? Say, look, somebody came to deal with that. He came to rescue you. The Bible says Jesus Christ came to save you from sin. Amen? Amen. Not for you to remain and stay up in this thing. Because if you stay up in this thing and you stay connected to this world, that's the outcome, you guys. And we're not even talking the soul. All right? There's a place for their bodies to be destroyed and then their souls to be destroyed as well. And so thank the Lord that we are not a part of that. Amen? Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank the Lord that we are born again, that somebody just put up with us. Amen. <laughs> and said, hey, I'm going to keep chipping away. That's why I tell you guys, keep praying for each other. Keep sharing the good news. Keep being a witness for Christ. All right. Because God has taken us through a transition. All right. Now, I'm going to pray for you guys. You guys can set up the offering for you guys that are watching. It's Venmo at NCCM Fam 7 Cash App. Dollar sign NCCM fam seven. All right. Um, but let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your glorious grace, Lord. Lord Jesus, no matter how crazy the world is, Lord, I thank you. <laughs> I thank you because it's not as crazy as what I just read, Lord. I thank you for this time, Lord Jesus, that you've even given us the wisdom to see these things happen, to even understand them, Lord. You said he that is speaking, Lord, Hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to the churches, Lord. He that has an ear, Lord. Lord, let us have an ear, Lord, to hear your word, Lord, to hear what is actually happening. Give us discernment and spiritual uh, uh, revelation, Lord. Give us the spirit of excellence, Lord, that we can really do this, Lord. You've called us, Lord Jesus. You said that the Holy Spirit is the greatest part of our inheritance, Lord, greater than anything else that we get, Lord Jesus, in that new kingdom. But we thank you, Lord Jesus, for eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for being the way, the truth, and the life. Lord Jesus, I ask, Lord Jesus, that you bless those that had a heart to give, Lord, that gave, Lord Jesus, and that will continue to give, Lord. Lord, we give our lives to this thing, Lord, but you gave your life, Lord Jesus, for us. So that doesn't even matter, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace and the opportunity to be a part of your family, Lord. We rejoice in this truth, Lord. We love you, Jesus, and we just want to follow, Lord Jesus, your ways. Um, even when you return, Lord, that you can just really speak to our souls and, and know that we did what we were supposed to do. I pray right now that you bless this offering, bless all the things that the people have been pursuing, Lord. Let us pursue righteousness. Let us pursue your will, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.